We have four children to be dedicated this morning. I'm going to ask if they come on up at this time. They'll need to come with their parents because, you know, they're kind of small at this point. Uh, but come on up. If you will, just stand right down through the front here at the other step there. That's it, Carson. We have four families in this service. And this morning we are excited as we see these lined up down through here. Logan and Abby Taylor and Lane. And then we have John and Angelica Shook with Beckett. And Kenneth and Lindsay Mayberry with Trey. Patrick and Aaron Smith. With Laxton. I don't know why this gets harder for me every year, y'all. It just does. Because it's such a beautiful thing. And you know, birth is such a wonderful thing. Everyone gets so excited. But you know what's more exciting is being born again. And to think about these children, these families, desiring that their children grow up to follow Jesus and to help change the world. And knowing that, you know, I'm probably about to enter the fourth quarter if I'm not already there. And they've just had the tip off. It's so exciting to for me to just look out and see, I wonder what's going to happen with these children. What will they be? How will they grow? And family, I pray for you, and I think about how God is going to use them mightily. But you see, it's the responsibility not only of these parents, but you, church, to raise them up to follow the Lord. You see, it's not just giving them a smile on Sunday morning. It's getting involved in their lives, maybe volunteering in student ministry, maybe volunteering in the kids' areas, volunteering in the parking lot to greet them when they come and giving them a fist bump or a high five. Anything you can do to say, hey, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. That's what it's all about. And as a church, we have that responsibility as well. And so we want to be involved in the lives of these families and these children. They are so innocent. And this world needs more believers. And it needs more families who are willing to say, we are raising our children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Regardless of what society says, regardless of what social media says, regardless of what our friends are doing or our neighbors are doing, our coworkers are doing, we are raising them to follow Jesus. Most important thing. Most important thing. So parents, it's your responsibility to provide spiritually and emotionally and of course providing all their needs. That goes without saying. But church, it's our responsibility too. So first we're going to ask these parents some questions in front of God and all of you as witnesses that they are saying, yes, we will do that in our home. So they can tell their children, no, we don't do that in our home. This is what we do because God said so. So parents, I would ask you these questions. Do you recognize these children are gifts from God who belong to God and that he desires that you raise them in his love. If you believe that and know that, would you please respond with saying we do? Do you promise to raise them with love, patience, discipline, and instruction, modeling Christian adulthood for them daily in all that you say and do at home and away? Will you pray for them and with them, teaching them the ways of our Lord, warning them about the folly of this sinful world and the snares the enemy has laid? Will you do that? If so, you may respond by saying we will. It's not always easy. And those of you who have other children, you're like, amen, right? 
It's not always easy. We're tired sometimes. They're tired. They don't want to pray at night. We're not so sure if we want to pray with them or whip them first. We don't know, right? Excuse me, correct them. That's what I meant to say. It's going on my history as a child. But listen, it's so important that you pray with them and that they see you praying, mom and dad. Church, as we sit here and we go, yes, you guys need to do all those things. Church, there are some things we need to do. So I will ask you some questions. Do you recognize these children are gifts from God who belong to God and that he desires that you support these families as they raise them in his love? If you believe that, would you respond by saying we do? We do. do you agree to give of your time? Now listen to me before you say we do. Give of your time to these families and children and your talents and your finances where needed to ensure that these children and many others will be enabled to discover Christ by hearing your teaching and watching your life? If so, you may respond by saying, we do. Now, do you agree to pray for these children, to pray for these families, and teach these children the ways of our Lord, warning them about the folly of this sinful world and the snares the enemy has laid as you are involved in their lives through this church? If so, you may respond by saying, we do. There's nothing more beautiful than seeing these children and how quickly, for those of you who are mature in the room, like me, I like that word now, mature, versus older, they grow up so fast. And everyone tells you it's going to go by so quickly, and you're going to go, I got this. And you turn around, and they're looking you in the eye. Unless you have shorter children like I did. Then they don't look you in the eye. But listen, it goes by so quickly. I want you to remember this day always. I want you to remember this day every day that you go about your daily life, that you dedicated your children's daily life to involve our Lord. Would you pray with me? Let's pray for these children. A kind and gracious Heavenly Father, I pray for these families, God, that you would watch over them. God, that you would just move in a mighty and powerful way in each of these families. God, that you would just touch, that you would stretch them, that you would grow them. God, that these children would see you in every facet of their family. That they would see you, Father, in every facet of what we do at church, from the parking lot to the kids' areas to worship. And God, I pray most of all that these children would come to know you at an early age and that they would follow you all the days of their lives. God, I pray for these families who are standing down front in front of everyone saying, we want to raise our children in the way that God desires. God, bless them Use them and raise these children to be mighty warriors for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 All right, we'll start all the way down on the end. I can make my way back. Laxton. A rose. <laughs> a rose for mom. New Testament. A letter for Laxton to be open on the day he gives his life to Christ. And we're praying for that. Praying for that. There you go, Lindsay. And Trey, there's your Bible, buddy. And there's his letter to be open. I know, I know, that's exactly right. All righty. There's 
rose for you. A letter and a Bible. Thank you. There you go. God bless you. Let's just give these families a hand. That's all we can say at this moment in time. What a beautiful time together. Families, we're praying for you, and we love you, and thank you for your dedication this morning. Amen. Let's all stand together.
Father, we praise your name and we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. God, we just ask you to move in this place and use it for your glory, your praise, and your honor. Amen. You may be seated. Some call you Mama. Some call you Mommy. Some call you the most smartest. Some call you so funny. Some call you homework helper. Some call you higher, higher. Some call you their hero and also their taxi driver. Some call you Nana or Abuela or Mima. Some call you Mother. Please stop spoiling them all. Some call you a mentor. Some call you a friend. Some call you God's kindness for the mother they never had. Some call you from the beginning. Some call you much later. Some call you guardian or foster parent on paper. But paper never stopped you from showing up open-handed. You were no less the mother and the love God intended. Some call you joy, some call you graceful, some call you strength, some call you faithful, some call you constant, some call you care, some call you always, some call you there. Some call you the greatest, some call you the bomb. But I, I call you blessed. I call you Well, happy Mother's Day, everyone. And thank you for not saying that back. <laughs> so sometimes that can that can catch you. Uh, but we are so excited, and what a blessing this morning has been so far. Amen. I don't know if you have noticed. But the family is under attack. The family is under attack. If I were to share with you uh, a definition of a, what a rock is, is there any way you can change what a rock is? If you hit somebody with a rock, can you say, well, boy, that was really soft, <laughs> right? I know because I hit a girl in a swing set who had been throwing dirt clods at us in the head with a dirt clod and it was a rock when I was a kid. Her dad was not happy, and my mama saved me, so I remember that. She, you're not coming in here after him. You got to get through me, and I'm like, yeah, right? and then she tore me up with a belt. Anyway, so, but, you know, the definitions are changing, and the family is under attack, and so it's so important that we do what God says that we do in preserving and protecting the family. I want to share with you from Deuteronomy chapter 6, beginning in verse 5. And he's talking, he says, Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home, when you are on the road, when you are going to bed, and when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Have you done that? 
Are you doing that? More important than we will ever understand. That we are always constantly talking to children, our children, our grandchildren, nieces, nephews, great nieces, great nephews, children we see out in the world. You are so cute. You are beautiful. God has made you so beautiful. Have a blessed day. How hard is that? We're to teach the children about God. Teach the children about how he loves them and how they are to love others. Have you done that? Will you do that? Do you do that daily? We'll talk about all kinds of things. We'll talk about making sure they get this done and this done and this done. We will talk about how we make sure that they know how to swing a bat, throw a ball faster and faster, or shoot a double leg takedown in some cases. <clears throat> we'll make sure they get all that, even get them some extra help, run the ball hard, hit the jump shots, be aggressive, get on the floor. Have you worked out today? Are you working out this summer? Remember, you got to work out this summer. It's not going to happen. You got to practice. You got to train whatever the extracurricular activity is. But the thing is, are you telling them about Jesus daily? Here's what he's done for us. Here's what he continues to do for us. Here's how he's meeting us in our home. Here's where he's meeting us whenever we had this issue come up. Here's how he's meeting our needs when we had this unforeseen issue happen this is how he's walking us through this illness through this financial struggle through this time of brokenness through this time of relational struggle at home here's what Jesus can do and not only can do he has done he did it that's our God so are you telling them about Jesus daily are you living out your faith in front of them daily? You know, there's a song I've been watching you, Dad. Maybe you've heard that song. When the orange drink spills and the catastrophe happens. What are they saying when they're upset because of you, Dad? What are they saying when they're in a tough situation with another person, another child at school, mom, when you had a run in with somebody and how you handled it, was it with grace and with love and like Jesus would? You see, it's as important or more so, more so that we live out our faith versus going on the old adage, don't do as I do, do as I say do, right? How'd that work out for you? If you make that decision, it's going to end up bad. Yeah, right, Mom, I got this. And then what did Mom say? Come here, I love you, but what did I tell you? I told you, didn't I? Was that stove hot? Pew! Yes, it was. And you must love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Do we do that? Do you do that? You see, it's not just important for children. It's important for all those around us. Every day. Every day. Well, of course I love him that much. Let me ask you, when you've been on the phone with your spouse or someone that you're close to, and you say, when the call is over, I'll see you when I get home. Okay. Do you then say, darling, I love you more than life itself. I'll see you in a few. How, anybody? Because I want to know. <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. Right? Or do you say, all right, love you. 
Love you too. Love you too. Love you too. Boop. Ever do that? Love you too. Is that one word, by the way, or three? I don't even know. It just kind of rolls, right? Am I telling the truth? We don't say, I love you. Don't forget that. Why? Because it's such a habit. Now, is it such a habit? Of course I love the Lord. Of course I've given my life to Jesus. Love you, God. Mean it. Talk to you later. I got a meeting this morning. I'll have to talk to you later on. All your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. All your heart. Everything that's within you. I have nothing else. I have nothing. These clothes are yours. These glasses are yours. This microphone is yours, Lord. The breath in my lungs is yours. I have nothing. And I will leave with nothing. But you have my heart. And you have my soul. And I'm going to love you with all that is within me. And that includes loving on others. Includes loving on those who may seem unlovable. Or they may seem different from you. They may do things differently. But you love on them anyway. Love God by loving those he created in his image. That's pretty much everybody, right? 100%. All your, intell all your intellect, all your soul, all your strength, love and defend your heavenly father. That's what we're to do. Love and defend our Heavenly Father. Does he need us to defend him? Nope. But in this world today, I would say to you, we need to. Because in doing so, we're defending our faith. You know, sometimes we need to just say, hey, listen, you and I have something in common. We are both using borrowed breath. How about that? That might get someone's attention to say, you know what? He is responsible for waking you up this morning. With all that we are, all of you. You know, it's funny when having coached high school sport and having coached all kinds of sports, you know, one thing you want to tell kids is, listen, it's coming down to it right here. You got to have heart. You're in the fight, you're in the trenches, you're in the battle. You've got to have heart. You got to play smart. Smart, you got to be strong. And you got to do it with all that's within you. Right now, come on. We tell them that. But how often do we say, to our children and to family members. You know, sometimes family members, it's hard to share with. It's hard to share with. But how much more important is it to, with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength, love, defend, and share your Savior? Love, defend, and share your Savior. You know, it's important that we teach these children. You know, I shared this morning about the children in the hallways and the children in the children's areas and all over the place. Sometimes we want to just have them be obedient right in to just making them dread coming in, right? Because there comes in a certain time. I remember my aunt used to take me to church on the weekends when I would be down at my dad's. And 
She'd say, I will make you some eggs and a whole pot of rice if you come spend a night and go to church with me. And I'm like, it's worth it. I'm coming. I'm coming. And I was just a little guy. And we would go to Sunday school and I would have an amazing time. Just a little guy. And I would always go over there after Sunday school and she'd be sitting, we'd be on our row, right? We all had a row. We'd be on our row and I'd say, do we have to stay for preaching? This was a look I got. Like, okay. Not a question. But you see, if we don't teach this next generation and the generation after and the generation after and the generation after, in the day of declining churches, we won't have a church to attend. So I would ask you, do the children in your life see your faith? Do the children in your life see your faith? Does your spouse see your faith? Or lack of? Are you together? Are you pulling together? Or are you pulling apart? So you can't please God without faith. You can't please God without faith. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, It is impossible to please God without faith. Verse 6, And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. You must commit yourselves wholeheartedly. All in. Are you all in or all out? Is your family all in or all out? You see, sometimes we want to have hokey pokey faith, right? We want to have our left foot in and our right foot out. And then what happens? You wind up shaking all about. A life lesson for you from a kindergarten teacher right there. You got to put your whole self in and stay there. We got to be all in. Lord, I don't know what's coming my way. I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, but I trust you. And I have faith that you're going to come through no matter what. It may not be what I want, but it will be what you want. And if it's what you want, it's what I want. But it's unpleasant, but it's awful, it's horrible. You're God and I'm not. I trust you and I have faith. Commit wholeheartedly. That's the only way. And not halfway. I've not done a wedding yet. Where when I go through all the questions. And it comes time for the ideas that somebody says, I think so. Probably. I mean, I'm going to try real hard, preacher. Not one. They all go, I do. And then I say, you did. <laughs> now you done. <laughs> so go do it. And do it well, Right? But nobody says, yeah, I, I'm pretty much there. What? If any guy proposed to a girl and she said, I, we can try it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know but I, about you, but I wouldn't have a lot of confidence right there. I'd be like, I am not want to lick that calf again. I don't know. So I'm just not sure. So when we say we're going to love the Lord with all that's within us, he means wholeheartedly, commit wholeheartedly, teach these children wholeheartedly, let them know that you mess up too, but God, he forgives us and he'll forgive you and we get to start over each morning fresh and new. If he wakes us up, we've got another shot. God, what's your mission for me today? Let me try to be 1% better today than I was yesterday. Let me follow you more closely 
today than I did yesterday. You see, in that wholehearted commitment, a lot of sports analogies this morning. Don't hold back. You know what? If you want to volunteer, volunteer. Be here. Be a part. Do your part. Because, see, if we are in a sporting activity, if, if we're in an extracurricular activity of some kind, nobody wants to stand over on the side. Everybody wants to get in the game. Is the same true at church? Is the same true at church? Is everybody like, hey, you are on the wait list for volunteering in the kids area because we have so many. We just don't have enough. We don't have enough kids. Right? Is that? We don't, we don't have, we can't get any more parking lot attendants because, I mean, we're parking them in the grass and across the road and everywhere else now. But, you're on a waiting list. No, when someone says to me, hey, pastor, I'd like to volunteer, I'm like, when can you start? When can you start? We need you. Commit wholeheartedly. We need you, church. He says, repeat them again and again, these commandments, to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Repeat them again and again to your children. The children in your life. They need to hear it. They need to see it. They need to experience it. You see, not every child gets it by you telling them. Some need to see it. Some need to experience it. Some need to say it out loud for themselves. And then they'll get it. But if you say, you need to go pray. You need to go read your Bible. You need to go spend some time with the Lord. You need to go worship in your room. We got to help them grow. We got to help them grow. We can't help them grow if we're not growing. Talk about the commandments of the Lord. Talk about the forgiveness that Jesus brings. Talk about the cross and what happened. Talk about the empty tomb. Talk about how we were far from God and we're right over here. We're right close to him. You have heaven to gain because of what Jesus did. Talk about the commandments of our Lord. Talk about the commands of our Lord. Talk about what he's done in our lives. But here's, a, here's one that's going to get you. Be obedient to the Lord. Be obedient to the Lord. But that is, um, that's going to be, that's not really going to work out at a good time. That's going to be inconvenient. That's going to be uncomfortable. I don't know that we can work that out, but Maybe we could, I don't know. When really it's just disobedience. What do we want from our children as parents and grandparents? Well, not really grandparents. I don't really care if they're obedient when they're at my house. <laughs> it's going to be like, roll with it. Parents aren't here, keep rolling. Right, want another sun drop? Here's an oatmeal cake. All righty, take one for the road. I put some in your backpack for the road. So... But listen, we want our children to grow and be obedient, right? We show them that when we're obedient to the Lord. If you will be obedient to the, to the Lord, your obedience will teach them obedience. Well, they say, why are we doing this? We're up way early. Why are we going over here to volunteer? Because God wants us to and we're going to follow him. We're going to be obedient. Listen to the children and answer the questions. They'll have a lot. Be honest about it. Have music playing so that you don't have to say, oop, I've got to turn that down. This one's got some words in it. 
I hope this meaning isn't that great. Put on some positive, encouraging music. Put on some things that are worshipful. Answer their questions. And it says, repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home, when you're on the road, when you are going to bed, and when you are getting up. At home or on the road, that's everywhere. Everywhere. Even though we're spending a lot of time on the road these days. Everywhere. Before going to bed. Before getting up in the morning. Hey, what's your mission for today? See, the future is now. And they need Jesus on their level. I'm so thankful we have a kids area that has... So many volunteers dedicated, and we need more, by the way, to giving them Jesus on their level. And it's your job to see that they get it, church, parents. Cross Point Kids is here to help, but there's more to it than that. And these children in our church, they're our responsibility too. Parents, they're yours and ours, the responsibility as we work together. Do they see you smiling and serving and worshiping and being kind? Are you, they see you worshiping when we're having our worship time? During time of sharing in the Word, do they see you tuned in or taking notes? Or do they see you going, ah, oh, man, Whew. whoa. You see, without dedicated children of dedicated families who are dedicated to a life of faith in Jesus, Christianity dies. Think about that. Is that harsh? It's honest. If we don't reach these children that they might grow up and continue to share the gospel, we have no church. But here's the good news. Here's the good news. Jesus is alive. So let's live like it. And let's share with them. Let's grow them. Let's show them. And then one day, when they look back, they're going to say, because I had a praying mama. Because I had a praying daddy. Because I had a neighbor that prayed for me because my neighbor invited me to church. Whatever that looks like for that child. And you are a part of that. The children you come in contact with, sow a seed. Because he's alive. So let's live like it. And let's go forth into the world and share. And let our children, regardless of their relation to you, see you sharing the love of Christ and sharing the gospel with someone else, then they'll go, hmm, I want to be like mom. I want to be like dad. Let's get busy. And let's raise these children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and let's pray for them. I don't know what's on your heart this morning, but you can always come down and leave it right here. You can come and pray right here. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you so much for this day. God, we thank you for how you have moved this morning already. God, we thank you for your many blessings. Father, I pray that you would just meet every need that's here in this place this morning. Lord, I pray that you would provide healing, and restoration. God, that you would just provide salvation. If there's one here that doesn't know you, God, that they would just come over and say, Pastor, I need a relationship with Jesus. God, for families that would come and say, hey, we just want to pray for our mom. Just want to thank you for our mom. And Lord, that maybe a mom is no longer with us on this earth, that they could just say, hey, I'm thankful for that mom. God, whatever it is, you move people as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Would you stand, please, if you're able. Wait, make your way.
Thank you so much for being here this morning. We're so glad that you were here. If you're new here, don't forget, I'd love to meet you right over there and just have a gift for you and say, hey, thanks for being our guest today. Excited about that. And then also baptism next week, uh, May the 19th. So if you haven't signed up, please try to get signed up by today or tomorrow. We would love it if you would do that uh, for us. And uh, that way we'll know ahead of time. And it's going to be a... Wow, service in both services. We have over 20-some signed up for baptism. And uh, so amen for that. <clears throat> and if you have given your life to Christ, but you've never said, hey, I want everyone to know I'm a believer. I've never followed him in baptism. 
then sign up. Let us take care of that for you. Also, uh, June the 2nd will be Graduate Sunday, so make sure you get everything in by the 19th, I believe it is. Yes. So we need your pictures and uh, post-high school plans or post-college plans, whatever. If you're a college graduate, uh, you're more than welcome to sign up for that as well. We just need to get that information in and get those pictures in so we can uh, recognize you on that Sunday. And then also, if you want to uh, continue to worship through giving, there's a box right there and one right over there. And uh, on your way out, moms, we just have a little something for you uh, on your way out just to say, hey, we love you. We appreciate moms. And uh, so I hope that you will take that as you go out one of these doors right here. And uh, church, we love you. We're so thankful uh, just to be a part of a group of people that just love the Lord. And we are who we are. Amen. I love that. I love that. Let me pray for us. Father, we thank you so much for who you are. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus, and the forgiveness of sin. God, I pray that you would just bless each family that is here this morning. God, I pray that you would meet every need that they have. God, I pray that they would pray for your will and not their own. God, as we leave this place, I pray, God, we would just go out of here on fire for you sharing the gospel, and truly being the church you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. 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 Have a great day, everyone. Happy Mother's Day, moms.